Hi everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I am a reenactor and a jouster. And recently I've had some questions about how to get into jousting. Now with the current pandemic, uh, there's not a lot of jousting happening around the world. So it's not necessarily a great time to be getting into that. But here are a few ideas to help get you started. First of all, you really need to start thinking about learning to ride if you haven't already. Um, riding is a massively important part of jousting. When I first got involved, I kind of felt, well, yeah, you need to know how to ride a horse, but it's just basically straight lines. Um, yes, that's true. Uh, it is just straight lines, but there's so much more about that. Um, in many ways, if you're riding a good jousting horse, the pass itself is not really the difficult bit. Um, getting the horse to not run when you don't want it to run is really important. The horses love jousting, uh, so you need to be in complete control uh, to stop them from going too early. Not only that, but we're also seeing more and more actually how advanced medieval riding actually was. We do have some dressage manuals from later periods, not from the 15th century uh, or from uh, jousting periods. But actually, um, what's really interesting is you can actually see in the documents, in the paintings, the horses doing dressage steps. So if you are interested in getting into jousting um, and haven't had the opportunity yet, do take a bunch of dressage lessons because that is going to really improve your riding um, and is going to be really important for you uh, once you actually start climbing onto a horse in armour. Okay, another thing that you're going to want to do is do a whole lot of reading about the medieval period. A lot of jousting nowadays tends to be focused around the 15th century in particular the second half of the 15th century. And I think that mostly comes from modern jousting um, kind of really being championed in England. And in England, um, there was a really large um, late 15th century medieval scene due to um, basically one of our civil wars happened um, in the late 15th century. So there was a bunch of people who had 15th century armor and they got involved with jousting. Um, However, there are so many cool harnesses from different periods. So have a think about what you would like to do and uh, um, what kind of a harness you would like to joust in. Do loads and loads of research and talk to loads of people who have jousted themselves. Don't just go to one person. Talk to a broad array of people um, to get their opinions because everyone has got a different experience of jousting. You also want to think about what kind of jousting you want to do. We've got quite a few different types of jousting in the modern period, um, which is exactly the same as, you know, in, in the historical period. Not all jousting was the same um, back in the medieval period either. Um, we've got show jousting, which um, is occasionally called string mail jousting. Um, and this is basically a stunt show uh, with people in costume armour doing um, tricks from horseback with a medieval theme. Then um, there is the balsa jousting. This is the one that I, um, I enjoy doing myself. Um, the armour is as historically accurate as we can make it, but the lances themselves um, use replaceable tips most often uh, with balsa. Uh, this makes it a bit cheaper and depending on who you talk to a little bit safer although obviously um, balsa can be dangerous if it is not respected properly. In America they've got a slightly different um, type of jousting um, which I tend to cause, call grand guard jousting. Um, uh, this type of jousting is done with a more 16th century armour which has got a gridded grand guard and they tend to use solid lances um, which are kind of like dowels 
and the main idea of this is to knock your opponent off their horse and they get some pretty impressive looking hits when they're doing that. If that's something that interests you, uh, then you'll need to track down uh, someone who knows a bit more about it than I do. Finally, uh, there is the Solid Lance Historicals. This is as close as people can get it to the historical jousting and they use um, basically everything as it would have been done in the medieval period. The armour, the lances, even steel coronels on the end of the lances. That type of jousting does take a massive financial investment. None of the other types are cheap. <laughs> Let me uh, tell you that right away. You know, you are going to have to spend money if you are um, jousting, but to get everything completely right um, and completely authentic so that it's as safe as possible is going to set you back quite a big amount. So once you've decided what type of jousting you are interested in, then you're going to need to find um, someone who can teach you how to do that jousting. Looking online and uh, um, basically tracking down the individuals in your country that do that um, is really the only way that I can suggest it. Um, you may even need to go to a different country in order to learn how to do it. I said it was going to be expensive, but the jousting community is not massive. Uh, you should be able to find us. You can find my group Destria in the description down below. But if you're not from England, then uh, um, you can always contact me and ask if I can put you in touch with someone who jousts in your country. I may not be able to help, but I will always try. Once you've got in contact with someone, then you kind of basically need to find out if you guys are compatible. Just like in reenacting, people put different weight on whether something should be uh, completely authentic or whether something should be uh, maybe a little bit cheaper or easier or whatever. So you need to make sure that um, your group um, or the person who's going to help you into jousting and you are basically talking the same language, you know, when you say, I want it to be authentic, do they mean the same thing as you? Um, so get to know them a bit, have a bit of a chat, see if that's for you. Don't spend huge amounts of money, please, before you work out whether this hobby is for you and whether the, uh, the people that you're talking to are people that you want to spend a, um, a good amount of your time with. Jousting can be really stressful um, and you need to know that the people that you're hanging out with are, um, you know, are on the same page as you. Um, it's a hobby, right? You want to be having fun. So you want to do it with people that you like and that, um, that are there for the same reason as you. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully that has been helpful for some of you who are interested in getting into jousting. Um, if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments down below. If you liked this, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, um, I would love to hear what I can do to improve in the future. Thank you very much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.